What's up, idiot? Listen before we start. <laughs> so this right, is tell you starting? something. Listen. Okay. If you can you refinish furniture? I don't fucking know. If you, Maybe. If, can you refinish furniture? That's what I'm asking you. Right now, if someone gave you a piece of furniture that need to be refinished, could you do it right now? I think I could. Okay. Uh, but I, don't. Okay. Don't. If you can't do something like that, don't do it. I spent all fucking day with this goddamn nice desk that I have, taking it apart, realizing that someone 30 fucking years ago tried to refinish a desk and they didn't know what they were doing. They didn't have the right tools to do it. And it's maddening. It's fucking me up so bad because... I understand you want to try to do things, but if you get to a point and it's too hard, ask someone who knows what they're doing for help. Let them help you. This goes for anybody doing anything so that someone like me, 30 or 40 years later, doesn't have a fucking conniption fit with your nonsense mess that you made. Not you personally, just people in general. Well, you see all the people on Facebook Marketplace and wherever trying to paint on furniture and ruin it so am i surprised that someone ruined your desk no i'm not i mean i i think people should try and do as many different things as possible that's how i live my life that's how you live yours mm -hmm. but one of the things i thought was super interesting that i never thought because this is the other thing too you never think something is going to be connected so i was investigating a haunted house once allegedly haunted house and there was blood on the floor that kept showing up and nobody knew where it was coming from. It would show up randomly throughout the year. All of a sudden there'd just be blood on the floor. It, would, it was weird. And they had pictures of it. They would wipe it up and then it would be in the same spot. And it's very strange. When I got there and I saw that they had quarter sawn oak floors because I had, I had done furniture refinishing, one of the things that I remembered my... Uh, what do you call it? If I was an apprentice, what was called him? My teacher told me that in the turn of the century, since they didn't have stains and dyes, they would use cow blood to stain the wood. What? And yeah, because it would give it a dark brown color. Because of the salt content of blood, it never really dries and the wood never really absorbs it. And so with humidity changes and temperature changes, your furniture, if it's done like that, can bleed and the floors can bleed. Isn't that fucked that's up? So gross. What up? What's that other story you have about the um people who had the chair that was made out of the, the or the garage wood? Oh yeah, yeah. They, yeah, what's that? One? They had uh, they said there was a ghost in their garage. <laughs> I went out yeah. there. I went out there and I was walking around and everything was fine. Then I was in the garage and I was like, there's nothing here. Like this place doesn't seem creepy or haunted at all. And I leaned up against the wall and I was smoking a cigarette trying to figure out what my next step would be. And the guy like leaned out the door and he was like, how's it going out there? And I was like, it's fucking fine. Go back in your house. And then I was like, holy shit, that's not me. I would never speak. I, this is the second time I met someone. Yeah. And so then I like stood like I kind of stood up straight and then I walked outside and I was like, oh, like something made me feel weird. Over the next period of about a week, I realized it was touching certain boards in the garage. Weird negative vibes were stored in the wooden boards, but only certain boards. And I eventually contacted the people who built the garage and all of the wood was reclaimed from the Pontiac Mental Asylum. Oh. So like a, quite a number of their boards that they use all over Michigan have this weird wood and when I had the lady I was like do you have tracking can you keep track of all that wood and stuff and she's like no she's like a lot of it just got sent out all over the country to furniture makers and other builders so like there could be people sitting in a chair right now in like Arizona being like fuck I just want to kill someone and it's because the chair they're made out of is fucking full of weird paranormal wood <laughs> oh my gosh Everybody look under your chair. There's a surprise. Not a good one. You got a ghost chair. Got a ghost chair. That reminds me, I was going to bring up something to you. What was it tied in with? I was looking at old pictures on my phone the other day, and me and Angie were in Memphis. 
I don't know how many years ago, maybe like seven, we got this hotel and we check in and it was like one of those ones where the doors are on the outside. You know, you don't go in through the hotel, you like go in through the outside. So we go around back and we go up on the top um, floor and in just not that far away, probably like 50 feet away, there's like the biggest, grossest, scariest building you've ever seen. It looked like it was like floating in midair. It was just like dilapidated, horrifying building that you like couldn't see from the road. So of course we're like, well, we're gonna go poke around that thing when it gets laid out. So it was like an old, I think it's just called US Marine Hospital when you Google it. And we had, we did jump the fence and go poke around and the pictures are really creepy. And there was some old sign in there too. I don't remember what that was for, but, but anyway, so I don't know why, but I Googled it and they're making it into condos. Yeah. Like that's so bad. I, it looks different now. I don't know if they'll like market it that way or what if people don't know. That's interesting that you brought that up that they turned it into someplace else because so yesterday I did a podcast called We Need to Talk About Britney, which is all about Britney Spears. Mm -hmm. And Jen, the host of the show, wanted to talk to me because Britney was having, back in the day, she was having some problems and she got a Reiki healing and during the Reiki healing, like afterwards, she started feeling real weird and spiritually connected. Mm -hmm. And she saw this husband and wife ghost in her house, arguing and fighting with each other on the stairs. And she was like, I don't want to live here anymore. I got to get out of here. I got to leave. So she left the house. She put it up for sale. And then the house got bought by Brittany Murphy and her husband. And then Brittany Murphy died in that house. And then a year later, Brittany Murphy's husband died in that house. And so the host of the podcast is like, what is going on? And so in that podcast, I talk about obviously all the things I think about and all the ideas that I have. But one of the things I brought up is maybe Brittany didn't see ghosts. Maybe she got a precognitive flash and the ghost of the husband and the wife that she saw was of Brittany Murphy and her husband going to live in the house. And the reason that it was so shocking to her is because she would have also picked up the echo of them dying in the house from the future. Uh, I wonder if anybody's ever asked her what they looked like. Cause that guy was very obvious looking, he was freaking huge. Right, oh. but, that, but that, that house now has been torn down oh. and rebuilt. And so no, it's not even there anymore. So yeah, super strange listening That's to all that and hearing about it. Then it's one of those things too, where it's like, did they pick up bad juju from the house? Or is it one of those things where like people are kind of summoned there, you know, like, did they get sucked into that weird, like living there? Cause they were already troubled or something. Right. And then imagine this, you have Brittany Spears living in the house and she has, let's say she didn't see ghosts. And then she leaves her shock energy behind in the house. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now there's this weird vibratory shock energy in the house, not only the ghost, but like the impression that Britney Spears left there. And then another famous Britney moves into the house. And then that's like, did the house know that it became a different Britney? Or did it think like, oh, this is the next Britney. This is the same Britney. I'm going to keep reacting because it's Britney. Because you have two women, super popular super famous, both named Brittany, both having problems, like trauma problems and issues. Like how would the house know it was a different person? This is crazy. I can't believe when you told me about this, I can't believe that no one's ever talked about this. Me There's either. been so I many have... documentaries about Brittany Murphy and Brittany and blah, blah, blah. Nobody's ever brought up the Reiki ghosts on the stairs. Right. Okay. It's amazing. It seems important. Yeah. It seems important. <laughs> Also, you told me about it yesterday. If anybody wants to have a really fun time, just call your dad right now and then accidentally say the word Reiki and then try to describe to your Midwestern dad what Reiki is. I don't I don't even know what I said. What, did, what do you think I said? said? That, well, I, listen, I go, <laughs> I go, it's kind of like, <laughs> I go, <laughs> I go, so it would be like if you went for a massage and then you like lay on a massage table and then okay, I'm like the Reiki person goes and gets like Reiki train, like they're certified in Reiki. And then I go, but it's not like a massage because they don't touch you, but they like put their hands kind of over you and then like pull down energy from the universe for you. I think that's what I said. Is that right? Yeah, that's about right. 
That's a good way to explain <laughs> it to a Midwest dad who would never understand it. I know. I was like, oh. And then you, throw the, then you got to at some point throw the real Looney Tunes thing in where you go like, and also if you can't make your appointment, you can still stay at home and they'll do it for you. <laughs> Via I swear, I think I said that too. I'm like, they can do it from far away. I know that doesn't make any sense. And can't you get certified in like one day? Uh, I mean, yeah. I took, I'm, I'm a Reiki certified master. Whatever, give me Reiki. I took, I can right now. I'm sure you just do when I'm around you anyway. I think most people do naturally. I think also one of the reasons that people always say like, thoughts and prayers and thoughts and prayers is you're doing a kind of unconscious version of Reiki. Like you're sending out your good positive universe energy toward people. I do that yeah. like all day long, every day. So you're yeah. probably totally right. Yeah. I like that. That's cute. Well, I wonder who Brittany's Reiki person is. Did they ever find out? I don't know. I don't think they did. Ugh. But then we also talked about, it's going to be a real interesting episode. We also started talking about how Brittany was having all these mental breakdowns and how intense it got and she had to kind of vanish and disappear and then she would come back and then she'd have another breakdown so i started talking about too the idea that with famous people all of society and fandom creates a thought form or a tulpa in that person that person has their own identity but then we collectively create another one and force it on them then they have a split where it's like, am I supposed to be this person? We we all normally have that multiple kind of personality, one that we show in public, one that we have in private, who we really are. But imagine having 10 million people with shrines to you, singing your words, looking at your face, trying to move like you. How does the universe react to that saying, Everyone is trying to be this person. Everyone is thinking about this person. Maybe this person is this person. And then the person's own true reality is like, no, 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 no. I'm me, I'm me, I'm me. How would you close that off? And how would you even deal with it? That's super interesting too, because her, her socials are so chaotic and wacky. And all of us are like, ooh, that's not Brittany. But like, oh, maybe it is. Right. That's not the one we created. That's herself just being normal. And we think it's weird because that's not how we think of her. Right. That's really interesting. Well, I never oh, thought I that being a paranormal investigator, I'd be doing Britney Spears' podcast. I know. What's the next topic going to be? I love <laughs> when we called in for stuff. That was the last thing I thought you were going to say on the phone. I'm like a Britney podcast. Okay. What else? Tired because I didn't go to sleep until 630 in the morning. Again? Yeah, I'm on a bad sleep schedule. I'm like going to bed at midnight like a nerd. Going to bed at 6.30 and then waking up at like 11. Ugh. That's not that's not enough sleep. No, you're doing too much. Get my down. brain off. Well, you got a lot to catch up on, I'm sure. I have to figure out how to be me again. I know. No, I can't remember. I know. Growing a beard. Mm, I like your beard. Do you want me to tell you my stupid story that I did on accident in the middle of the night? Of course. Okay, you so you don't have to say it's stupid. You can just say my story. Oh, but wait. <laughs> I'll figure out that it's stupid. <laughs> Every story I have is stupid. So I feel like it's a good thing to talk about anyway, because we're inevitably gonna talk about true crime and murders and stuff a lot. And that's all I watch and I worry all the time. Not eh, I guess not worry, but I stay ready. Stay ready for the murders. <laughs> like I'm not going down easy. <laughs> So my house has been broken into before. I don't want to get too much into that. But because of that, there's, and I want to preface this by saying like, in no way is this an ad. Like this is our second episode. We don't have sponsors, especially not big one. <laughs> <laughs> so there's this app I downloaded like a year ago called Noonlight. Um, and that's Noonlight with an N, like, like high noon, not moonlight. So anyway, so I downloaded it like a year ago. And it's basically you open the app and it's got a big panic button on the screen. And you hold it down, like if you're if you're walking from your work to your car, you hold down the middle of the screen, walk, and then once you get in your car, you lift your button off, or you lift your finger off the button, and then you put in your code, and then you're cool. But like, let's say it's it's for like if you were walking and somebody tackled you, you would drop your phone, you wouldn't put in your code, and then it instantly calls the cops and gives them like your 
your location from GPS and it alerts like your first emergency contact or however many contacts you, you store in there. So like sometimes I'll have it out when I walk the dog or like you could have it out if you were on like a weird date and, and you couldn't alert anybody, you could just hit the panic button, right? But like, it's a free app. So I've always been like, okay, I hope this works when I need it because I don't freaking know, but it still, it makes me feel better, whatever. So, so anyway, cause I've had my house broken into before I sleep with the app open so that if I ever heard a noise in the middle of the night or a window broke, I would just hit the button. <sighs> so I, <laughs> Bean wakes me up to go pee at like 5.50 in the morning. And I'm like, Ugh, just out of it. I throw my phone in my hood, take him out. Everything's fine. Get back in my bed, take my phone out. Oh, there's like three texts from Noonlight. Are you okay? Are you okay? We called the cops and I'm like, oh my God, what did I do? So like, I'm like, no, 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 I'm fine. I was taking my dog out. I hit it by mistake. So then the police call my phone. I answer and I'm like, I'm so sorry. It was an accident. And then he's like, well, it's protocol with this app that we have to come there anyway. Cause like, I could have had a gun to my head. Like, and I'm just saying, no, I'm fine. Bye. So he's like, the police are going to be there in a minute. Just meet him on your porch. And I'm like, Oh, and I'm like, I have like sleep shorts on. I have no makeup on. I'm like, this is a disaster. So I go, <laughs> I go outside and I'm like, I'm so sorry. And it was like two officers and they were so freaking nice. They looked like it was like their first day. They were like little. And I'm like, I'm so sorry. I'm like, I'm really impressed with how well this app works, but it was a mistake. I'm so sorry. And yeah, so from the second I hit the button to when the cops were on my porch, it was seven minutes. Isn't that wild? That's wild, but I'm sure that doesn't work like that for everyone. I know. I was going to say that too. Like if you live in the middle of the woods, like obviously they're not going to be there that fast, but it's like still pretty nice to know that regardless, somebody's coming. Like, or if, if you live you, in, Or if you live in downtown Detroit, that's not going to happen. <laughs> but like, okay, but the other, this is another sidebar, like, hey, obviously I told I you. I thought I was, you were going to say you walked out on your front porch and someone mugged you before no. the cops got there. No. <laughs> no. But. So that's me being stupid, but I'm glad to know it works now. And I haven't slept with the app open, so I don't do that again. But the other really cool thing I like about it is, and I've used it before with um, like picking up items on Facebook Marketplace or just whatever, if I have to go somewhere and I just feel weird, you can open the app and make a bunch of notes. So like, I'd be like, this is who I'm buying this from. I would leave their Facebook link. I would leave their phone number. And then I put my whole outfit on in case they had to look for me. And then you just save it so that if, I hit the panic button. They already have all the information. I don't have to say anything. So I just think everybody should get that. And I'm really impressed with how it works. And um, they can sponsor us if they want to. I thought you were going to say something like it didn't work. You let your finger off the button. And instead of calling the police, it went to an ad screen. Right? <laughs> any sense that it works that good. Like, that's better than home security. Like, I was stunned. I'm like, wait, they texted me like five times and the cops called and showed up all within seven minutes. Like what? Like I'm the president? Like who the hell am I? Nobody cares about me. It was so weird. So yeah, that happened. And then I, and literally I had already put the dog back in the bed. He goes back to sleep. I'm on the porch with the cops. The dog just, he's just sleeping away. Like, oh, mom's an idiot out on the porch with the cops. I'll just sleep. So I won't have the cops. I'll just have you standing outside my house crying. You know what? <laughs> That, okay, that was the, first of all, nobody even knows what to talk about now, so now we have to explain it. You, okay, me and you made plans. It was like an hour before, so I said, I'll be at your house in like an hour. You have a history of heart problems. I'm and, a terrible sleeper. Right. So I go over your house. I banged so hard on the doors. I banged on your windows. You didn't come out, so I thought you were dead. And then I banged on your whole house for like 10 minutes. I called Dana and I said, I, we had plans. He's never done this once. He's always like outside when I get there. And then I was like sobbing. And then they called you in the house and then you came outside and you were like, oh my God. I still feel bad about that. Dude, I, it just didn't feel right. I'm like, this doesn't feel right. I just talked to him. Why wouldn't he come out? It was so bad. I was like really close to breaking your window out. You could have. I would have allowed it. I know. What's your uh what what are your what's your home protection weapons? Do you have any? I have a lot. 
<laughs> I have a big right now in the corner of this room I have a giant pickaxe like a huge one that I found at a yard sale and then next to my bed I have a switchblade and a hammer <laughs> <laughs> those are fuck you up weapons dude I watch way too much forensic files and way too many horror movies and you are leaving with no hand if I just for real Who's going to come at me if I have a hammer? What a psycho. And then I have, I, I want to say there's a different knife by the front door and there's one by the couch. I think that's it. I want a gun. I know that's kind of- I have never talked about this though, but do you have weapons where like, if some someone wouldn't think there's a weapon? Like mm -hmm. in my house, my home weapons, mm -hmm. they there are weapons where like, you would not think that behind that bottle, there's a knife. So if someone puts me in a room or like, oh, I, you know what I mean? Yeah. There's a there's something in there that they don't know about. Well, dang, I don't have, yeah. I gotta do that. I always think about that too, because my bathroom, I'm like, what the fuck would I do if I was in the bathroom? I'm nothing right. in here. Exactly. And all you gotta do is tape a knife on the back of the toilet. Oh my God, you're so smart. All right. Well, I have enough knives here to do that. Yeah. I just don't have them in the right spots. <laughs> oh, here's another, here's another pro tip too. Circling back to me getting my house broken into. Oh no, I don't want to say it. Then whatever, how many robbers? Are, do you think more people listen to this show that are good people or bad people? Because this is a tip for the good people. This is, I think most people are generally good. Okay, so listen, when I got my house broken into, they literally dumped out everything in this house. Every box, every bin, every closet, every drawer, every everything was dumped on the floor. Like there was nothing in this house from top to bottom, attic to basement. But the one thing that I noticed is if you, I don't hide money in my house. There was nothing here for them. But if people do do that, the what I noticed was the only thing they didn't touch was the food. So like if you put money in your pantry or something in your, your cereal box or whatever the fuck, it's the only thing they didn't touch at all was the food. So hide shit in your food, pro tip. My pro tip, because my house got broken into too when I lived uh, in my other house. And I was asleep on the second floor by myself in the in the duplex, and I heard someone coming up the steps, and it was late at night, and so I just looked through the crack in my door, like from, I didn't, all I did was kind of raise my head, because I could look from my bed out the door into the hallway, mm -hmm. and I saw someone who had come up the steps turn, and they looked right into my bedroom. So I slammed my foot down on the floor and just started making a lot of noise. And he took off. He, he bailed, went out through the back door of my house. Uh, but when the cops got there, they said the reason that they came upstairs was because there was nothing on the main floor that they could grab and steal. Mm. The TV was too big. The stereo was too bulky. There were no CDs at the time. You know, there were no DVDs. There was nothing worth money that they could grab and get out. Mm. And he's like, so a lot of the times the police officer said, if you have uh, an expensive watch or something small, mm. he's like, just, and, and, and you're in a high traffic, high truck crime neighborhood. He's like, just leave it in a place that's readily visible if someone broke into your house, because that's all they want. They just want five or $10, something they can sell for $15. They'll go in, take it, and leave, and you'll never even know that they were there until, you know, the next day or whenever you notice that the object's missing. Uh, yeah. It's a pro tip there, I guess, some way. Or that's really smart. Like that, he, also said, if you don't, he also said, if you don't have anything that's valuable, leave booze bottles open mm. and, like, out, because they'll take those. If they can't spot anything that's worth money, then something that will get them fucked up, so they'll take that, too. Yeah, one of the creepiest parts about getting broken into is they, like, I know I said they didn't touch the food, but they, like, there was a two liter here, and they, like, drank my pop and left it on the table. That's so fucking creepy. Do you remember, do you remember that story about the guy, the woman who was getting sick in her house? She put a security camera in her house. Do you know where I'm going with this? I don't know. There's lots of stories like that. Was a, she was living in an apartment building, and she kept getting sick, mm -hmm. and she put a security camera in her house and the landlord was going in her house and he was jerking off in her food and eating her food and like oh it was super gross and what that's why she was that on 
Uh, I, uh, this was years ago. This was like pre-internet. I remember seeing it on the news because yeah. they had to find ways to talk about it, but they could talk about it on like two, four and seven. But yeah, he was in the house. That happened. That was a, uh, I had an investigation that was like that. There was a woman who thought that there was a ghost in her house. She lived in a duplex where there were two houses, you know, slammed side by side in one building. And she lived on one side of the building and a guy lived in the other side of the building. I talked to him. He didn't think there were any ghosts. I talked, you know, she did think that there were ghosts. I was investigating her, her side of the duplex. I think it was about two weeks into investigating. I was like, this guy is sneaking over here. I'm like, somehow this guy is getting into her house. Like it's not a ghost. And I realized there was a door that connected both sides of the duplex, but it was bolted from her side. And so I was like, okay, he couldn't get in through this door. I went up in the crawl space in the upstairs. I thought maybe he could get from one side of the attic to the other. Nope. There was cinder block wall all the way up in the attic. And I was like, maybe this guy's not getting in her house. Maybe she's got a ghost. And I was sitting on her couch. She wasn't home. I told her I wanted to spend the night alone so I could kind of get the feel for the house. And I noticed just the tiniest small crack of light around the wood door frame of the door and I walked over and I grabbed the door frame and pulled the whole door frame out and was standing in his living room and he goes yeah it was me ah! like, immediately that's the worst story you ever told me nobody's ever gonna sleep again <laughs> what how have you never told me that before that's so that's a nightmare that's a horror movie that's a nightmare he was just walking around in her house like he wasn't doing anything she just kept saying she heard footsteps and she felt like someone was in the house and there was he was just wandering around looking at her stuff being snoring so loud right now people are so much more fucked up than scary than ghosts i know we say that all the time how we want to go explore abandoned places or stop weird places when we're on road trips and we don't want to get murdered i'm not scared of ghosts we've both seen full body ghosts i'm not scared of that at all people no thank you when Chad and I were filming Ghost Stalkers, we were investigating a mental asylum in Maryland. So Chad was in the location and I was out in the RV and he was talking to the camera and telling me what he was experiencing. And he was saying that there's a, a ghost in here. I thought I saw an apparition. I can hear voices on my on the camera when he would leave. I could there were people in the building with him. And so I had to like cut run all the way across this huge field and get to him in the building and i was like you got to get the fuck out of here right now because these people don't know we're filming a television show they just think you're in here with them and they'll fucking stab you and kill you and so we had to we had to call off filming we had to have the police come in clear the whole location and the police were like oh yeah sometimes there's a, a rehab clinic down the street and sometimes people skip out on the rehab clinic and they come in here and so yeah you don't don't investigate this building they uh, that happened on um uh haunt me before that was like the scariest episode it was like katie and ty i think and they thought they heard something and there was a dude in there it was horrible shout out to haunt me crew it, ha it happens more than people know you're in these oh. old buildings and there's i mean there's kids that just go wander around and cause problems yeah can you hear the dog no it's so loud um oh i I also, I feel like in our last episode, I told you about how I call him Duchess. So I have to call it, I have to tell you what his nickname for today is. Steamy Steve again? No, not Steamy Steve. It's Quail Egg. <laughs> <laughs> Quail Egg? Yeah. Where did that come from? I don't know. He's just a Quail Egg. Looks like one. He's so comfortable right now. Oh, let's tell everybody how you ruined my life yesterday by saying that old antique photographs of people and dogs that I collect because I love them. You told me they're all dead. Most of the time, if you have old tin type or old turn of the century photographs, people had to stay still for extended periods of times for the exposure of the cameras and animals can't stay still. So if you see an animal in a, one of those photographs, it'll have a blur on its tail or on its foot or on its face because it'll be turning and moving during the entire exposure time. If you have a picture of a person from that era and the animal is sharp and crisp and clear, that is because that animal is dead and mm -hmm. it's taxidermied and it's not moving. The animals in my pictures are not dead. Check them for blur? I don't know. I got to go back and look at them now, but I don't want to. But shout it's out to everyone with old pictures with dogs in them. Just go look at your dead dog pics now. Yep. Damn it. Like the, person, 
all those people are just sitting with dead animals. God. Right? Like, hello, this is my dead cat. Hello. Uh, I mean, I guess that's nice, but. I guess, but now I have. But that's why people a lot, I mean, with those old photographs, that's why old people, that's why when you look at those old photographs, eyes are always fucked up. Mm -hmm. because people would be looking around during the exposure and so their eyes get glossy and blurry or their eyes are focused perfectly on the camera but their head it will have slight movements so their eyes will be sharp and crisp and clear but their head will be just a little bit out of focus gross that's why those photos look so strange we got to get tin types done there's and people who still do them there's a bunch in gettysburg yeah there's a good one in pennsylvania somewhere too wait where's gettysburg <laughs> Maryland. Pennsylvania. It is. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. I just showed my whole ass. <laughs> Geography idiot. We could just take a picture and I could put a sepia filter on it and then we could say. No, it they team. make real ones. They look so cool. I swear some of the tattooers I know have gotten them done and they look great. I wouldn't want it done if it was stupid. We should go get the aura photos too. I've already done it, but I'll do it again. Yeah, I have an aura photo here somewhere from 30 years ago. I'd like to see how if the black yeah. cloud if the black cloud around me has changed. <laughs> Just don't tell anybody about their dead dog photos before you go in there. I, I have an MMA question. Oh, you do? I do. Oh my god, let's have it. I was looking at some of your Twitter posts and stuff, and then I was looking at some of the pictures of fighters after they fought. Mm -hmm. Do do MMA fighters actually make enough money that it's okay that their faces are destroyed and their no. bodies are destroyed no i would I know say the, i know the big names make a ton of money like in any professional arena whether it be music or boxing or sports and arts rec whatever what what do you think is good for a average fighter night do you have an estimate like okay this is how it goes like the stars like the the people on the last fight of the night the main card main event i would say most of them most of the bigger people make like a million or like some of them only make like half a million um so like in the grand scheme of like regular athletes basketball players baseball players nowhere near and you're right they they take so much damage that it does shorten their career probably shortens their life so no not worth it and then you get down to like people on the undercards who sometimes fight there for years and years before they touch a main card. They, a lot of them have, a th okay, so some of the bigger people, they'll have a thing where you make that number no matter what. You win, you lose, you show up, you make that amount. A lot of the smaller people have a, a split. So you get, let's say you get 15K fight and 15K to win. So if you lose, you only get half. And if you miss weight, they take like 30% out of that amount. And if you miss weight, you can't get even if you had like the best fight of the night like let's say they were going to give you the extra 50k you're ineligible for the extra 50k if you missed weight so there's like a million different ways to not make enough money for them fighting no unless you're like huge so most people will make i think something like what maybe like 200k a night 100k a night but it's like not good and most of them only fight like three times a year and with that money you have to pay your camp your manager your training partners your gym so it's not great a lot of them have side hustles a lot of them own gyms some of them own like coffee companies one of them's like a realtor so they do have side hustles it's rough unless you're huge like professional athletes in any sport whether it's basketball or boxing or mma baseball even you can only be a professional athlete for so long your body cashes out of it mm -hmm. You know, people make a big deal when someone plays baseball into their 50s. No, there's no way to do that here. Most of them stop 40. And then there's been a weird rash too lately of people. They get like brain damage, like real brain damage, or they get like emotional issues. Like there's one guy in there right now who's like, I guess, has a history of being the nicest dude ever, the nicest brother ever. He, what was it? He was like visiting his sisters and he stabbed both of his sisters like 20 times. And they almost died. They both made it to the hospital. They didn't die, but they're not mad. They're like, he needs help. He's our brother. I know that's not him. And he snapped and that shit happens. So that's really terrifying. I can't remember who it was and I wouldn't want to say his name anyway, but that story was rough. It's dangerous. I don't know. There's a lot of skill to it. I know it's hard to explain to people, but obviously I love it. It's all I do. I watch, I try to explain to people how many hours of MMA content I take in a week. I'm like, 
Okay, on Monday I have to watch Ariel. On Tuesday I listen <laughs> to the Bash. On Wednesday I listen to A Side. On Thursday, it's usually Media Day, uh, or like other podcasts. And then Friday is Wayne's. Saturday I watch the fights for a good eight hours. And then Sunday's like my only day. And then one of those nights I have to make Crystal Keys to Victory too, which nobody knows what I'm talking about right now. But do you know the first time I ever heard of MMA? What? I was, this is years ago, and I was bar hopping on a Friday night in downtown Royal Oak, and I was talking to the manager of one of the bars downtown in Royal Oak, and it was him and me and a couple of the bouncers, and this super drunk guy came across the street from Fifth Avenue, one of the other bars, and he was like being super belligerent one of the bouncers was like you got to go bro like you gotta get out of here and the guy goes i'm on MMA, man you can't tell me what to do i'll take your whole crew down send your boys out for me oh and God. the the door guy just immediately dropped him like oh my god <laughs> it was it was amazing oh i don't god. like seeing people get hurt but this guy was so jacked that he was tough and powerful and he kept saying i'm mma dude i'm mma i train i fight and this bouncer didn't have any like in the bouncer it was so funny because the bouncer was just a big a big large overweight guy you know a bouncer mm -hmm. and just one punch dropped him and he was like we get these guys all the time who think that they're ultimate fighters and i was like i don't even know what any of that means <laughs> mixed martial arts ultimate fighting all these guys think they're super hot stuff. He's like, all you got to do is they're drunk. He's like, that's the first thing they don't realize. Yeah. He's like, that's my main advantage. Everybody that comes in here, no matter how tough they are, they're they're on rubber legs to start. If he said the words, I'm MMA, that he doesn't train because that doesn't make any fucking sense. <laughs> like, I assume that now. <laughs> no, that guy doesn't train. What else did I want to bring up to you? Whenever anybody uh, screams at the top of their lungs, that they are something, they usually mm -hmm. are, are not that thing that they are screaming. No. When no. someone's like, I'm an expert, dude, they're usually not an expert. No, it's the quiet one in the corner you gotta watch out for. They're just gonna decapitate you. Or in anything. Yeah. Like yeah. if someone is like, I'm the best kisser in the world, that person usually has never kissed anybody. Yep. <laughs> or I got a huge dick and then they have the worst dick ever. Worse. <laughs> I was gonna tell you not to make you bring up all your old stories in one episode, but um I I always bring up almost always bring up spooky shit to my clients. And I noticed that the one story that I always try and tell people and I always mess it up is the um the auntie lottery story. And I'm not I'm not good at it. There's not that much to it. I met her niece uh at a coffee shop in Detroit she was reading tarot and I had never seen anybody read tarot like that and then we started talking we became friends then she introduced me to her family who were all old magic practitioners voodoo magic and hex magic mm -hmm. uh, they had moved to Detroit from New Orleans and Auntie Lottery was like the matriarch of the family the oldest and the most powerful and her and I would get super hammered together she like could out drink me because I don't drink brown liquor and she did. Mm -hmm. And so she would just put me under the table and think it was so funny. We were talking one time about Auntie Lottery's sister and Auntie Lottery's sister's husband who had been super abusive and a terrible person. And then he died and they were collecting his insurance. And I said like, well, how are you collecting his insurance if she's, if he's dead? And she moved off of topic and then the next time I saw her and we were drinking I asked her again and she laughed and she said oh he's dead but he's still alive that ended up leading she told me to drive her so I drove her to a school in Detroit at night mm -hmm. and we knocked on the back door of the school and the janitor came to the door and he knew who she was and let her in and then she called out the name of that gentleman and he came shuffling down the hallway and I had seen pictures of him so it's pretty normal for some families to take funeral photos 
So I had seen mm -hmm. pictures of him laying in a coffin, like funeral photos of him. And mm -hmm. all of a sudden here he is shuffling down the hallway, like pushing a broom, glassy eyed. And she told him to sit in this chair across from us and he sat down. He didn't say anything the whole time we were there and he was just staring. And she just was so wickedly mean and heartless. And she was just laughing. Look what you are. Look what you are now. Look at how big and strong you are now. And then at some point she was just laughing in his face and she goes, get up and go back to work. And then she looked at me and she was like, let's go. And we got up. She had told me previously in her storytellings about things that she could do and magic that she had and the family magic that she had that at some point or another someone would give you a silver coin and if they had your silver coin they could control you and she had given me one and when we went back to her house she was getting out of the car and she looked at me and she goes you still have your silver coin don't you and I said yeah and she goes you better hide it and keep it you don't want anybody getting it because I have that man's coin and she got and walked back to the car and I was like this is fucked like this isn't even funny anymore they somehow or another however zombified this person which like whether you believe in magic or not like they gave him something to brain damage him mm -hmm. and it, it was just fucking terrifying mm -hmm. that's crazy like imagine me I, I'm just trying to tell people this story and I'm like they did voodoo and they changed this guy into a zombie wait he was a janitor he was a zombie and I was fucking <laughs> <laughs> That's like how the story goes for me. Someone asked me recently if I had seen her or if I thought he was still a zombie janitor. And Auntie Lottery's dead now. The the her niece is still alive. Mm. That's where I got the voodoo drum from that I gave to Greg and Dana. That's a, the Lottery family drum. Mm -hmm. I probably couldn't get in touch with the niece now, now if I, even if I wanted to. I, I don't think I even have her correct email anymore. But the school that that guy was a janitor in isn't even a school anymore. It's been closed. I actually saw it for sale on Realtor. Sometimes I look at old schools that are for sale and I think about buying them because mm -hmm. they're so cheap. Uh, but they would cost millions of dollars to renovate. But that school isn't even a school anymore. So who knows? Maybe he's working a job somewhere else. He was... 70 something years old 15 20 years ago so mm -hmm. it's doubtful that he would he's dead again i would i would suppose hopefully this, this, for him this time for good that's such a wild story but seeing that and having that experience it makes me wonder how many people like that are in the united states mm -hmm. or how many this is the other thing i try not to think about like how many corporations know that that's a thing you can do and that's the warehouses you're not allowed to see. Like all of the workers there are just fucking zo literally zombies, like just people brain damaged who are told to do one thing all day long for 12 hours a day. And then they go and they lay on a mattress and there's hundreds of them and they build things and pack boxes and you don't have to pay them anything. We always end on the darkest shit. <laughs> So the, the a couple of those stories that we told tonight or will tell in the future are from your real cases and investigations that you've done. So if anybody wants to hear more of those, Tenny's other podcast is called Realm of the Weird and it's on Apple Podcasts. It's on Spotify too, right? Or just Apple. Where, the way this one will be yeah. once uh, fucking computers, you know how easy it was? I thought it would be easier now that the technology has evolved to post podcasts and get it distributed than it would have been 12 fucking years ago when I started doing podcasts but nope it's still a fucking hassle and a nightmare we're gonna get through it people have to hear our stupid voices I'm glad we didn't do this yesterday I had sick voice I sounded like a worm <laughs> what, <laughs> what does a worm sound like don't look at me when I'm sick like ugh. That's what a worm sounds like. Tenny, tell me a story. <laughs> I let my I let my sister and my brother in law listen to the first episode. Oh God, are you allowed to play with me anymore? Yes, she <laughs> said it was. She said it was very fun, 
and they listened to it on their trip to Kalamazoo. She said it was a perfect time, like from where they left to got to Kalamazoo, it was a perfect time. And she thought it was very nice and very fun, but I never trust my sister because she's supportive of everything I do. So yeah. it could have been hot shit on a plate and she would have been like, that's nice. That's great. <laughs> Sounded great. That's good. Me and you and your sister and we're all going to get drunk soon in August. Yeah. Beach house. She Rager. Said, she said that she's super happy that she uh, rented not only the house for a little vacation for everybody to go to, but the little house next to it because she said when she was listening to the podcast and she heard Bean barking, there's mm -hmm. no way she could have dealt with the dog barking for the entire time. Oh, brother. He barks for like 10 minutes and then he sleeps for 12 hours in a row. I said it's he's because he's a whole podcast. I said it's because he's an angry old man. He is. He's chilling right now. He's just smiling. He just woke up. He's just getting ready to wake me up at five in the morning to go pee again. Got anxious problems. He's fine. He's yeah. fine. You get out of the car to walk to the other side of the car and he has a massive freak out. Yo, if you could have been with us, when I got pulled over by a sheriff in the middle of Iowa, I don't know what goes on in Iowa, but I, we got pulled up, I got pulled over for apparently speeding, even though every single car around me was going way, way faster than me. Every truck, I was like in the way. So I get pulled over and the sheriff's right. like, get out of the car. And I'm like, what do you mean? We don't do this. Admission, what do you mean get out of the car? Why am I talking about police so much on this podcast? Anyway, so he's like, get out of the car. And I look at him, I go, my dog is going to lose it. And he goes, get out of the car. And I'm like, okay. So I got out. Bean starts screaming like a monkey. I have to go sit in this guy's car because I was driving an ex-boyfriend's car. And it's not like he reported it stolen. He knew I took the car and he was like, he he brought up the thing and was like, oh, it could be potentially stolen. I'm like, no, it's fucking not. So whatever. So I had to sit in his car while he fiddled around on his computer and wrote me a ticket. And then I went back and then I went to a convenience store and I'm like, um, I just got pulled over and they made me get in the car. Did they do that? And she's like, I've never had to do that. And I'm like, where the fuck can I fucking get out of here, Iowa? <laughs> but despite that, I actually really liked Iowa. I like driving in nothingness. So it worked out good and nice for me. It was just corn and nothing. What, was that when we went to Voliska? That was on my way out to South Dakota. And then I got you on the way back. Yeah. 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 We'll have to cover that on a whole nother episode because I think we're we're about out of time. And Bean has to go to the bathroom. He's standing on the end of the bed staring at the wall. So we have to wait for this one last thing because it kind of circles back to what you were saying before. I saw my neighbors today because I was on the back porch working on that fucking desk. <laughs> and they how fucking ridiculous is this? So when my dad went back up north, he took the car with him. So I don't have a car, right? Mm -hmm. They have thought for the past month that I was up north. Your neighbors? Yes. Because there was no you car. You outside the... all the time. I know. What the fuck? But there was no, there was no car in the driveway. Yeah. So, so they they thought that I had have not been home for the past month. Well, you're dead. Surprise. But, I mean, how do you... My lights are on and off and I'm walking around until six o'clock in the morning every day. I'm getting mail that's coming into my house. People are dropping off packages. I'm picking them up and they didn't see me the whole time. My, it snowed. I shoveled my sidewalks. <laughs> and you feed the squirrels every day. This is how people are just mentally blown up right now. Right now. Like their brains just aren't working. No one's brain is working correctly right now. No. And you like walk to the gas station all the time. They haven't seen you at all. I think you're invisible. I mean, okay. I think everybody in my neighborhood, though, walking through my neighborhood in a hat and like a top coat, smoking a pipe with gloves and boots on, I've got to look like some weird freak. Who's that old, <laughs> who's that old man in a hat and a pipe walking around the neighborhood? It's Frosty the Snowman. Is that it then? Just end on that note of you being an, a non-perceivable <laughs> freak man. I've become a ghost. Yes. I'm a ghost. Full circle. Well, can we get peanuts and bird seed tomorrow? Yeah, we have to. And then I have to go to the bank. I have to go inside. I have to go to the beauty supply. Oh, that's good too. Do they have, uh, I need acetone. Uh, yeah, they do. Yeah, I need acetone for to get the polyurethane off the goddamn desk. Oh, Jesus, you have to post pictures of this freaking desk. Now people are 
Well, I can't post it now because it already looks a thousand times better. I've been working all day on a goddamn thing. If, if well, I would have been one of those people who monetized it. every fucking thing that I do, I would have taken before and after pictures. And then I would have wrote a post about how to refinish a desk. But it would have started with a 9,000 word dissertation on how I saw a monkey one time when I was at the zoo and how it reminded why, when anybody does anything, if I'm going to read a fucking recipe online, how come I have to read about how your grandma made a blanket when you were seven years old before I find the recipe? And then I had to click on another link to go to the fucking recipe. Nobody gives a shit about your grandma. Make cheesecake. <laughs> <laughs> you have lost it. I, I feel have. like last episode, I was the fucking loose cannon and you were like fine in this episode you were a weirdo and i was fine Fired. that's why that's all i got no oh, yeah, that's all i got too okay <laughs> okay say good night to bean bye bean good night bean you say bye good night quail egg night quail egg can you say bye can you say bye he's not doing it all right all right bye bye